Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are multiplying fractions and integers. This lesson will show you one of those common phrases called canceling out, what it actually means, how to use it, and how to use it as a shortcut. It's actually a really great overall lesson for middle school math. Let's take a look at what to expect. We will be simplifying fractions. It might be a bit of a review, but we'll go over that first, and then we'll talk about multiplying fractions. First off, let's talk about simplifying fractions. When you simplify fractions, you basically divide out any common factors. For example, if I had 16 over 72, I could know that a common factor of both 16 and 72 is 8, so we divide both the top and bottom by 8. That leaves us with 2 over 9. This is the way that we simplify fractions. We divide out common factors. So let's say we want to do this a little bit differently we could switch this to being 8 times 2 and 8 times 9. notice 16 is 8 times 2 and 72 is 8 times 9. this is what we're going to be doing today that's a little bit different because that's a common factor essentially that's what we're doing is we are canceling out that 8. Now, we don't just can't cross it off and it disappears. We're dividing. 8 divided by 8 is equal to 1, and 1 times 2 over 9 gives us 2 over 9. If the numbers on the top and bottom are exactly the same, we can cross them out. But I'll show you some other things throughout this lesson. I just wanted to introduce that. It's basically the same exact thing as what we're doing. You've done it before, so you're good to go. Let's do it. And again, this is addressing that whole canceling out thing. If you do have a 2 and a 2 and a 3 and a 3, you can, and a 5 and a 5, you can cross them out. And often we call that canceling out. But what we're essentially doing is dividing each number by, by itself. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And the advantage of actually recognizing that this is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, is that you'll know what you're actually doing. You, you don't make numbers just disappear. So now we would multiply 1 times 1 times 1 times negative 2, which gives us negative 2, and 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, and that would simplify down because negative 2 divided by 1 is simply negative 2. You might have been doing canceling for a while. I just wanted to explain what it is. I will show these steps and there's a reason why, and you'll see that kind of in a couple of minutes here. Why do I write down those ones as we go? And how do negatives factor into this whole thing? Well, negatives work exactly the same way. Watch what happens. I'm gonna cancel out, boom, boom, boom. And again, we can put in those ones. Now, let's say I've got this two and this two. What you're going to do is divide out or factor out a 2 from each of them. And that would leave us with 2 divided by 2, or negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, and 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. So we're still factoring out, right? We're, we're crossing those off and we leave them with the 1, but that negative remains. You see that? So it's the same exact process with negatives as it is with positives. And that's important to note. You can't just cross off a negative and get rid of it. That negative remains because it stays as a negative 1. This is one of the reasons why when we're, we're taught to cancel out, it's important that we're taught the process of what we're actually doing. All right. So let's do another thing. And um, I want to show that we do have prime factorization where sometimes you would list out all the prime factors of a number like 12 is 2 times 2 times 3 and 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. This is the prime factorization or the prime factors that multiply together to give you a number. In the past what we've done with 12 over 16 is we would find the greatest common factor divide by that both numbers by that greatest common factor and that would give us our simplified number. You can also use prime factorization, just write out the prime factors that multiply together to give the numbers, find which ones cancel out, and whatever you're left with 
is the fraction in lowest terms. It really can be simple, especially if you like doing prime factorization. Then you wouldn't have to worry about necessarily finding our greatest common factor all the time. Now you don't need to use prime factorization and that's the other thing. You actually don't need to simplify them all out and I'll show you that in this example here. Now this is when the canceling out kind of takes it to the next level. Let's see what we can factor out. We've got a 5 on the top and the bottom so we can factor those. Now you'll notice that this next thing I'm doing is actually factoring a 3 out of both 3 and 6. And that's where writing down these numbers becomes really important because there is 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So you can factor out any common factor using this crossing out canceling out method. Now we have a 2 and we can cancel those out. 2 divided by 2, 1. 2 divided by 2, 1. We can do the same with this 4. I've got a 4 on the bottom. I factor that out. There's 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So you're looking for any common factors. Now, where this gets kind of interesting is that now we have a 2 on the numerator where we canceled out that 8. We have a negative 2. We also have a negative 2 on the bottom. When you have a negative on both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, it actually factors out to being positive, right? Negative divided by negative does give you a positive. So we end up with, in this case, 1 over 1 or 1. And if you wanted to multiply the four numbers on the top, multiply the four numbers on the bottom, you'll find that it is exactly the same. I've just written them out in different factors. So you don't need to write them out in prime factorization as long as you recognize common factors between both numbers. All right, quick uh, review on fractions. This here will come into play later on. Negative 4 is negative 4 over 1. 7 is 7 over 1. Negative 5 is negative 5 over 1. That's what fractions look like. If they're not written as a fraction, you can write every number as a fraction by putting it over 1. So now let's put everything we've talked about together, where if we get a situation like this, 3 over 8 times 6, we'll know exactly what to do with it. So we would rewrite this as 3 over 8 times 6 over 1. Notice all we did was change the 6 to being 6 over 1. And what we can do is draw that fraction bar straight across and with multiplying, remember this is with multiplying, not with any other um, operation. What you do is multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. And now, at this stage, you can pull out common factors instead of, you could mul I mean, you could multiply 3 times 6 is 18, 8 times 1 is 8, and then get your greatest common factor and then factor out. Or, at this point, you can pull out common factors. All right, or you could write it out in prime factorization like this. 3 times 6, which is 3 times 2, and 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 1, and then we get all those common factors. Now, we didn't need to write it as prime factorization of 6 and 8. We could have recognized that both 6 and 8 have a factor of 2, and we could have divided 6 divided by 2 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4. We could have done it that way as well. But writing it out in prime factorization just makes it really clear what we're doing. And we have no other pri uh, factors that are common, so we just multiply across. 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 2 times 1 is 4. And that is our final fraction in lowest terms. It is an improper fraction, so some teachers might ask you to change it into a mixed number, but basically you're done at this point. All right, I want you to try it out. Here's a practice question. It's a challenging one. You've got a negative, you've got a whole number, you've got, oh, you've got all sorts of fun things. You've got integers, you've got fractions. Go for it, try it out, see what you get. All right, this is the way I would do it. I would change that negative four to being negative four over one. I'd write out the fraction bar, and then I'm going to write the prime factorization of all of these numbers. So 8 becomes 2 times 2 times 2. 
and negative 4 becomes 2 times negative 2. I'm going to cancel out anything that is common and I'm going to remember that when you cancel out that 2, we're canceling out the just the number 2, not the negative sign. So I'm going to rewrite it as negative 1 so I remember when I'm multiplying across that it is 5 times negative 1 on the top and 2 times 1 on the bottom in the denominator. All right, here's a practice question that will blow your mind. It looks complicated, but really it's not so bad. I want you to try that one out, see what you what happens. Go. All right, welcome back. First, I'm going to make these all into fractions. And in one step, I'm going to make the fraction bar uh, uniform across. So basically what I have there is 3 over 5, negative 4 over 1, negative 2 over 3, and 5 over 1. That's what I have. Now I'm going to cancel out anything that's common. I've got a couple of fives. I've got a couple of threes. And that's it. Everything else is not common on the denominator and numerator. So all I need to do now is multiply. Negative 4 times negative 2 gives me positive 8. 1 times 1 is 1. So my final answer for this is 8. It may have looked really complicated at first, but when we simplify it by kind of spreading it out and looking at the small numbers we have, we can make our lives a little bit more easy. All right, here's another practice one, a little bit more complicated. Try that one out. Three, two, one, go. Just realized this lesson's getting long. Oh, I apparently already canceled that out. Oops. My animation's messed up. I apologize. All right, so if you um, ignore the blue lines there, we do have five, negative 5 over 7, 2 over 3, 14 over 1, 8 over 1, and 1 over 10. Now, with this, I'm showing an example of factoring out the factor of 7 from both of these two terms. So I have 7 divided by 7 on the bottom and 14 divided by 7 up top. So that means that I'm going to put a 1 and a 2 on those ones. I also recognize that 2 has a factor in itself and 10 is an even number so I can factor that one out. That leaves me with a 5 that I can also factor out but I have to remember when I am factoring out that 5 I, I'm left with a negative. I can't just get rid of the negative without doing anything with it. Is there anything else I can factor there? I've got a 3 on the bottom and a bunch of 1's I've got a 1, 1, 2, 8, 1 on the top. Nope, I think that's it. So I'm going to multiply the numbers straight across. Negative 1 times 1 times 2 times 8 times 1 gives me negative 16. I've got a 1 times 3 times 1 times 1 times 1 on the bottom, which gives me 3. Pretty straightforward. That's my final answer in and as an improper fraction. Again, if your teacher wants you to write it as a mixed number, um, you would do that as a final step. All right, final end of lesson, things to keep in mind. All integers can be written as fractions and simplify using common factors. You can do this using prime factorization. You can do this just recognizing certain factors of each number. You can do this in multiple steps. It's absolutely fine. But this is a great trick that helps you kind of simplify math a little bit quicker. I hope it was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.